What's up, gentlemen? What's up, gentlemen? It's a beautiful day. Man up Monday. As you can see, I got my man up t-shirt on, but I got a brother in the studio that we recently played something on the air from him, and it just really changed my life just to hear his testimony. Most of us say we've gone through some things, but when you find somebody else that has really gone through some stuff, then you say, wow, I've gone through nothing. This brother right here is a mammoth of a man, an incredible testimony. Put your hands together wherever you are if you're clapping. Please clap. For Bishop Ron Archer. How you doing, sir? I'm so blessed to be in your presence and being with all the men who are up toward greatness. Awesome time to be in the studio with you, sir, and to address all my brothers, all the men who are striving, climbing, and trying to be better every day of their lives. So you're bishop and a doctor. So, Dr. Archer, I got to say this. Yes, sir. There are some people who may not be necessarily familiar with your testimony. Yes, sir. Can you give us a, a, a quick recap sure. of your testimony? I was 10 years old in Cleveland, Ohio, trying to put a gun to my head and blow my brains out. The gun had a safety on it. I didn't know how to dislodge it. I was basically raped with a broomstick. My mother was a prostitute and a call girl. I was born premature, didn't have a pancreas, could not function properly. And when I was in the womb, actually, they tried to abort me with a hanger. I grew up in poverty. My, there was no faith, no God, no Bible, no church. We grew up in gun violence, you name it, drugs going on. And so I just wanted to die. My, my thinking was, KD, wow, wow. if the next 10 years are like the past 10 years, I don't want no more years. As a 10-year-old, you said Yes, that. brother, I was done. You've been raped with a broomstick. You can't function properly. I was a severe stutterer, didn't know my father. My mom was out in the streets doing the thing. My grandmother was basically sick with cancer. My grandfather was in jail. My three uncles were hooked on heroin, belonged to a group called the Devil's Disciples. And so here I am as the youngest grandchild living in poverty, degradation, having no sense of hope, no future, and I wanted to die. But a teacher found me in a boiler room when they put me because I couldn't learn. They said I was too dumb. I couldn't speak properly. When I tried to talk, man, it was a show. And she had me sit down and say, I'm going to show you your future in the Bible. I said, my future? Whoa. And she said, look at Jeremiah. Before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. And before you came out, I sanctified you, a prophet to the nations. And I said, oh, Lord God, I cannot speak. I'm only a child. She said, don't say that. Because God is going to put something in you that's going to turn your pain into power, your wounds into wisdom, your scars into stars, and your tragedy into trouble. I began, Katie, to memorize 2,000 Bible verses. Wow. When you begin to put the Word of God in you like that, it changes your head, your heart, your hands, your habits, your humanity, and your habitat, and everything about me was transformed. I became the message of hope. I became the message of my family, and everybody in my family through my life got saved because I understood everything you go through in life, brothers, is a down payment on your destiny. Nothing is wasted, no pain, no failure, no brokenheartedness. It's all used to propel you toward your destiny. Wow, wow, wow. You're a mammoth man, man. You, you just have a presence about yourself, and I can see why. And I'm looking at your resume here. You, you've been an NFL chaplain for several teams, the, the Steelers, the Dolphins, the Bengals, the Browns, military leadership advisor. I mean, yes, sir. people really come to you, and uh, we'll talk about that maybe in yes. some, some, some other times. Sure. But I got to ask you this. Yes. How did you overcome such a tremendous, tumultuous past? I think every man has to recognize there are two kinds of people in your life that help you. Mentors and tormentors. Mm. Both are necessary. Mentors show you where you're headed, where you want to go, and how to get there. Tormentors keep you on your knees, keep praying, keep you humble, keep you focused on God. So for me, my pastor was my mentor. My football coach was my mentor. My past was my tormentor. A great quote says, I don't tell you who I am. Because you may not like me, and all that's all that I have. I was determined, KD, to never tell my story. I wanted to bear it in the deep blue sea, achieve academically, achieve in my life, career, make a million dollars, and throw that whole thing away. I never wanted to share. But I tell you, the greatest power you have is not to hide, not to be ashamed, not to be afraid, but to be transparent and be real. People are attracted to authenticity and reality to be who you are. God has called you to be authentically real. It is better to be a true original than a cheap copy. Be yourself. And that opened up doors. I would meet with presidents of countries, and we talk about policy, and they sit there and give me their talk about their organizational yeah. development processes, yeah. their pedantic nomenclature, intellectual academic jargon. 
going to. But when I got real and said, this is who I am. This is where I'm a prostitute's kid. I was a, I was a, a border, almost boarded by a pimp. I was beat down. I had a broomstick put up my, you know what? Yeah. And when I became real, they got real. And that's where connectivity, it's called transparency, reciprocity, rationality, and consistency. I like it. So when, when you become transparent Woo. and you become real, yes. what does that do to guys in particular? You know what? We want to impress each other. We want to dominate it. We want to show I've got more money. I got a bigger car. Yeah. But when you come to a guy being real and transparent, it's called magnetism. It draws people into your circle that you're not there to hurt them. You're not there to put them down. You're not there to make them look bad. You are there to lift them up because you are coming as a servant leader, not as a dominating personality. Wow, man. I, I appreciate that. And, and you overcame your past. And I know it was it was it was tremendous. But one step at a time, I would imagine. You know what? Life is a journey. It is one step. I always say, by the yard, it's hard. By the inch, it's a cinch. Climb that mountain one step at a time. Do one thing. Well, my whole thing at first was learn how to talk. I was a stutterer, man. When I was in school, they get mad. They have poetry about me. His name is Renardo. He is a retardo. Whoa. He sits on the steeple. When he talks duck, he looks at the people. So I had to learn just to talk. And what I had to do, man was to learn how to enunciate the inconsonant sounds of my words, to slow down, and I, learned, I had to say things like this. The sea ceaseth, and it sufficeth us, and proper preparation prevents poor performance and impossible punitive punishment. Being a stutterer, I was there all day, brother. Oh, wow, wow. But you know what? Let okay. me tell you, brothers, okay. let me tell you something true. Anything worth doing in life is worth doing poorly at first until you master it. Incremental improvement is better than perfection postponed. Do what you can with what you have, with where you are, and God will give you the rest. I'm, stand, I'm giving you a standing <laughs> ovation. I can't stand up because the camera's on me, but man, I'm clapping. It's from my heart, brother. It's what oh, I've, I, wow. I, I've cried for this. I've bled for this. All to be here today to tell my brothers, your best days are ahead. Don't give up. Don't turn around. Don't think you can't make it. If a trick baby from Cleveland who was raped and left to die can do this kind of work, I know God has something great for you to do. But do small, do it all, and take one step at a time and serve somebody who's worse off than you. Ladies and gentlemen, I know ladies are watching this, but brothers, that is exactly how you man up. 